Our second story out front, stonewalling on Libya. That's how vice presidential candidate Paul Ryan describes the president's response to the attack in Benghazi. They refuse to answer the basic questions about what happened. You know, and so his response has been inconsistent, it's been misleading, and more than a month later, we still have more questions than answers. Now that came as Republican lawmakers pressed the nation's top intelligence officials in a letter that reads, I quote it, our questions should not be hard to answer, and the American people have a right to learn what our intelligence communities knew. Out front tonight, Peter Brooks, former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense, and Nick Burns, former U.S. Ambassador to NATO. Good to see both of you gentlemen again. Nick, let me start with you. Senator John McCain, uh, Senator Graham, Senator Aya were the ones who sent that letter 10 days ago to the administration. Uh, CIA Director Petraeus was on it. Um, James Clapper was on it, Assistant to the President for Homeland Security. Uh, James, uh, James uh, John Brennan was on it. And they asked, who knew what and when did they know it? Is it fair to say that they're stonewalling? I don't think it's fair to say that at all. You know, I think it is legitimate to ask what happened that night. Why did um, you know? Why did we lose four great American public service, including including Ambassador Chris Stevens? What lessons must we learn from that? And how do we protect our diplomats going forward? That's the question. Uh, Secretary Clinton, as you know, has ordered an investigation and a review of that entire process led by one of the most respected people in Washington, Ambassador Tom Pickering, retired ambassador, and that. That process should not be politicized. That committee needs to take the time and the care to give us the right answers and to give a complete, uh, a complete investigation. And you know, I think what's happening is this entire process has been politicized because we're in the middle of an election campaign. Mm -hmm. And we ought to put our emphasis on finding out what happened. And frankly, we ought to put our emphasis in going after the terrorists who killed our ambassador and his three colleagues. And, and I think that's where this debate should be. All right. Well, let, let, I don't want to. I want to talk about that point more in a moment. Um, an interesting New York Times headline today saying that the man that the U.S. suspects being behind the attacks is literally snubbing the U.S. And, and walking around without being questioned on the streets of Libya right now. But let me ask you first, Peter. This earlier today, State mm -hmm. Department spokeswoman Victoria Newland was asked if the State Department was made aware of what the intelligence community knew within 24 hours of the attacks. That is, that extremists led the attack. And uh, of course, in, in contrast to what Susan Rice said on the Sunday talk shows, it was not spontaneous. Here's the exchange when that question was asked of Victoria Newland. We never talk about intelligence issues from this podium uh, at all, so I'm not in a position to comment on that here today. Mm, wait a um, second. That's yeah. not true. You talk about go. intelligence issues when you want to talk about them and when it's in your interest to do so. That's fair. Um, all right, it was sort of a, a, a funny moment. There was a laugh after that. But yeah. obviously, this is a, a woman who, in the days after the attack herself, was asked whether it was a terrorist attack and said that it was not. So obviously, yeah. they did talk about it at that time. Why the difficulty here answering this question of, the, of what the intelligence community we now know knew within 24 hours and why that did not end up in the public domain? Well, I mean, I think uh, candidate Ryan had it right, you know, stonewalling. At a minimum, they're slow rolling this. I mean, there's no reason these answers should not be provided to the Congress. That's their duty is oversight of the executive branch. We have four dead Americans, tragically dead Americans, and we deserve answers about this. I mean, this is an issue of transparency. This is an issue of, of accountability. And I think the American people deserve a lot better from the, uh, of this uh, from the, uh, the current government. Nick, who would have made the decision? to put Susan Rice on the Sunday talk show to, to make her the face and voice of the administration on this. Do, do you know? I don't know who made that decision, but what I do know is this. I think we've had, um, I think we've had, you know, the president, some legitimate questions asked here. The president will have to answer some more of those questions on Monday night in the third debate. And the questions will range from what happened? Was there a security breakdown? Why did that happen? And what are you going to do about it? But the other questions that I was suggesting I hope will be asked as well mm -hmm. as to what we can now do to reduce the threat to our diplomats. I do think, Aaron, as I said, as I said before in your program, it's, it seems reasonable to me that you can't always trust the first reports that come in. The administration right. obviously felt that they, they believed that, these, that, the, that the attack had been inspired by the video. They changed their opinion when more information came in. But they knew to that me, within 24 hours uh, is what just, I still don't understand. Why didn't that end up in the yeah. public domain for so long? I mean, isn't that a fair question to ask? But here, but it's, it's a fair question to ask. I think it is a fair question. But, you know, here's the problem. 
We now have a report about some information made available in 24 hours, but we don't know what other information was colliding with that because we on the outside of the government are not privy to everything the administration was being told. And I'd just like to stress this. On a nonpartisan basis, I think these are very honorable people, President Obama, Secretary uh, Clinton, and Ambassador Rice. I am convinced they would never mislead the American people, and I really think they need to be given a little bit of a break on that particular question. All right, Nick, Peter, thank you very much. We appreciate it. It's going to be a big topic on the debate Monday. And still out front, name-calling, physical contact. That is happening today in American politics uh, this season. It's disgusting and yet somehow delectable, and you're going to love seeing the tape of it, and that's next. And Julian Castro hit the national spotlight with that speech at the Democratic Convention. The rising star said he believes in shared prosperity. But is he sharing it with the wrong country? An out front investigation.